All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about painting loose opposed to painting tight. First, I'm gonna talk about why I like painting loose opposed to painting real tight and realistic. And then I'm gonna give you some tips and advice on how to loosen up your paintings if you're painting too tight and loose. All right, so if you're new to this channel, my name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. And this is Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So every Friday, I release one of these Q&A type videos where I answer your questions. Now, I do have other tutorial type videos on my page. So if you're looking for uh, tutorials, exercises, demonstrations, stuff like that, go check those out on my page. Don't forget to hit those like buttons and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Now, I've recently kind of changed up the format of these paint talks, and I've actually really liked been doing these kind of big umbrella questions that, that, that cover a bunch of little questions. Because like, for this topic, I get asked a lot of questions dealing with painting loose, painting tight. You know, people kind of ask the question in different ways and kind of different aspects. So I thought I'd make this video and have this talk that would just kind of cover all of it. And another new aspect is I'm showing a time-lapse video of a painting. This way the videos have more visual value. You get a glimpse into my painting process. You're not just looking at my big dumb face talking about painting the whole time. And this time-lapse video actually comes from a full painting video tutorial that is on my Patreon page. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, check out my Patreon page, which I've linked in the description below. All right, painting loose. Uh, I've always been more drawn to loose painting than tight painting. Like I've never, you know, gone back and forth. Like I've, you know, even when I was a little kid, when I first started, you know, watercolor painting when I was, you know, 10 years old, I just immediately was copying people that had a looser style. That was just way more uh, impressive to me because I had drawn, uh, you know, since I was three and I picked up some, a little bit of skill in drawing, then kind of started transferring that over to watercolor and acrylic painting. And I don't know, I just feel like that once I kind of got the hang of some few basic things, I could kind of see how somebody could keep improving on those techniques and pushing them and pushing them and then getting to, you know, very realistic tight painting. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice is difficult, but like I could see how someone could do that. When I would see these paintings that were very loose and you stand back, you know, 10 feet from them and they look, they look for the real, but then you get close and it's just a mess of thick paint and, and is just kind of almost chaotic. I was just like, whoa, like how do you do, I have no idea how you do that. Whenever I look at something and I think I have no idea how you do that, like that's what interests me. Like that's what's really impressive to me. I was just blown away that someone could communicate so much with so little. It's kind of like being able to communicate the same story in the same way in a one page poem as you could, you know, in a full novel. Now I'm not saying like realistic tight paintings bad or like it's, it's completely subjective. This is just my personal taste and why I like loose painting. Now it's kind of a bummer because I feel that with all of the technology that we have now, and how easy it is to get high resolution photos. Uh, it, I feel like loose painting isn't being taught and learned as much because you go online and you see pictures of paintings and you don't get that experience of seeing a painting from the appropriate distance, you know, five, seven feet away and taking it in and then being able to get up close. Like you're just given this one format of looking at it, which is on a screen and it doesn't have nearly as much impact. Also like thick paint, when you see thick paint in real life, it just has a completely different, like you can't, there's no photograph that's gonna capture that or give that same experience. So in that sense, I feel that looser painting styles aren't as good looking on computers and screens as photorealistic paintings. Also, the fact that a lot of people are painting from these photos that are so high resolution and that you can zoom in so much on them and get so much detail. I mean, I, I paint from a, a computer screen all the time, uh, but the fact that you can do that, I feel people get caught up way too much in details because if you think about it, when you're painting from life, painting from life is just the best and that's... I feel like you're more likely to paint in a looser style when you paint from life, uh, whether it's plain air painting or still life or, or you know a figure, portrait. There's just certain restrictions that happen naturally when you're painting from life. Like if you're painting in plain air, time is an issue. You know, things are moving. You have to capture things quickly. 
if you're doing a, a portrait of somebody, they're sitting a certain distance away from you and you can't get really up close to them and, and get, you know, you can't zoom in and get detail. I mean, you can get up and walk over to them, but that normally doesn't happen. You're going to be, you know, set up at your easel, sitting down, standing up, whatever, and looking at your subject and, and what you see from that distance is what you're going to paint. Yeah, there are people who do extremely tight, very realistic paintings from life. I'm just saying in general, especially when you're starting out and learning, painting from life is going to more than likely produce looser style paintings because of these restraints. Now, when I talk about loose painting or not tight painting, there's a difference between painting loose and painting sloppy. I'm not talking about painting sloppy. I'm not talking about just messing up your brush strokes for the sake of being loose. Uh, I'm more talking about a confidence. Like I feel like when you really know what you're doing and you can communicate what you want with an economy of brush strokes, that you can lay down marks and color and value with a strong confidence. You know, you, you have a bigger brush, you lay down a mark and you're confident in that mark and you leave it. You don't have to go in there with extremely fine little brush and just de 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 I think that's a good way of putting why I like uh, looser paintings is just that it exudes a certain amount of confidence uh, handling the paint. All right, so what are some things that you can do to paint looser? This is, I get this question asked so many times. I was actually just talking to a student of mine about this and he asked this very question. And, you know, just as I was saying before about uh, painting loose and simply is like, you know, writing a poem that communicates the same amount as a full novel. And that in order to do that, you have to be very good with words. And with painting, I feel like you have to be very good at a couple things, mainly drawing and value. I feel those are the two main things that a viewer won't forgive. Like we will forgive the wrong color if it's in the right value. We won't forgive a face if it's drawn poorly. I mean, think about it, like with a portrait, one millimeter off on an eye, and oh, the, the, the eyes look too far apart. There's something wrong with the eye. Like we're very quick to to be bumped by, by drawing mistakes. In value, you know, I've always said, uh, value does all the work and color gets all the credit. Color's fun, but that color needs to be in the right value and values, you know, how dark or light something is. And I feel like if you talk to like any painting instructor, they'll say the number one problem that their students have is just getting the right value. So you gotta really understand those because you can't rely on detail to make your paintings interesting. You know, I see a lot of beginners, you know, trying to push the detail so much to, to make their, their painting interesting. And the truth is, is that it's the, the, the detail is not what makes your painting interesting. And you need to learn the base fundamentals of, of painting to understand why you find that subject interesting. Because it's not the detail, it's most likely the composition, uh, the, the values, the relationship of values. So always be practicing and getting better at your value and your drawing. Another thing you can do is paint smaller. Uh, paint on canvas sizes that are, you know, five by five, three by five, you know, very small and use a big brush and thick paint. And the thing is, is that when you paint that small, you're not going to be able to get detail, especially if you force yourself to use a big brush, you're going to be forced to see only the big shapes you're gonna, and you're going to be forced to make those big shapes as accurate in value and color as you can, because that's all you have to work with. I do these little studies all the time. I definitely do them before I do a larger landscape painting just to figure things out. And the great thing is, is that they're quick and you can learn so much from a 30 minute painting. It's very clear what's working and what's not working. It also highlights what your strengths and your weaknesses are. You will know right away what you're good at and what you're not good at. Another thing you can do is make sure that you're working big to small in terms of shapes. You know, even when you are working on a bigger painting, break it down into the big shapes. I know this sounds simple, but it actually is pretty difficult. It actually takes a lot of practice to train your mind to see the big shapes. And you can build detail by working to smaller and smaller shapes throughout the painting. That's the cool thing about working that way and seeing shapes is that you can 
make the painting as detailed as you want. You can stop looking for smaller shapes whenever you feel you want to. So, if, so when you're painting and you catch yourself with a small brush at the beginning of your painting and you're working a section of your painting, pretty far along while there's other sections that have not been worked far along stop step back work the painting as a whole make sure all these shapes are there and bring it don't get too far along in one section because you've got to always be comparing what's going on you lay down a shape you lay down a value a color you got to step back and compare what you just laid down to everything else that is going on in your painting and you're probably going to have to make adjustments so you lay down this color oh looking at that color now next to this color i realize i got to adjust this color so i'm going to adjust this color well adjusting that color now makes me rethink the color that's right here you just keep doing that and building the painting all at once another thing that i always do and it is my number one tool that i always come back to whenever i'm feeling overwhelmed with shapes or detail or confused or lost squint your eyes squint your eyes get rid of detail it's going to make you one see the shape a lot clearer it's going to help get rid of color and and make you focus more on value when i squint my eyes i don't see as much color i'm i'm just seeing light and dark shapes and you need to get those working first before you go into any detail so always squint your eyes simplify your subject if you can't see it when you're squinting your eyes it's not important that's another thing that squinting your eyes helps with is it shows you what's really important in a scene now the saying goes use a bigger brush than you think you need i have heard that ever since i picked up a paintbrush and it is true. Force yourself to use a big brush, especially if you're doing these exercises and especially at the beginning part of the painting. When you're first blocking things out, you need to be thinking big shapes. So get a big brush and cover a lot of area quickly because the quicker you get paint onto your canvas, the quicker you're gonna be able to see what's going on and the quicker you're gonna be able to make adjustments. I talked about this earlier, uh, paint from life. Uh, paint from life as much as you can. I know it's, it's more difficult. It takes more time to set up. You can't always get like a model to sit for you if you're doing a portrait, if you're painting in plain air. I know going outside with the bugs and the heat and the wind, it's tough. Uh, but if you can, try to paint from life because just like I said, the physical restraints will force you to paint in a certain way. It will also force you to see in a certain way. The information that you're taking in from life is just better than the information you take in from looking at a photo. And if you paint in life enough, you'll be able to take what you've learned from painting in real life and utilize that when you do have to paint from a photo. It'll get to a point where you'll be using the photo truly as a reference, which is just a, a helpful tool, not the end all be all, I have to make it look like this. So if you are working from a reference photo, don't get too close to your photo. Don't be holding it up right here, trying to get every little detail, especially at the beginning of the painting. Have it far, like set it up from you and have it at least an arm's length away at all times. The length is gonna be different depending on how big your photo is, if you're painting from a phone. I really recommend not painting from a phone. I mean, I do it sometimes, but if you're just starting out, just, you know, paint it. If you have a big computer screen, you can paint it from there. Uh, I mean, really the best is just printing it out. I mean, the colors aren't going to be as good if you don't have a great printer. Um, but if you do have a big enough computer screen, like I said, like, I guess that would be the best way. I just, I see a lot of beginners trying to paint and they're, they're painting from like a little small image. It's like, of course your painting's not going to turn out well. You're looking at an image that's like this big, you know, blow it up, really see it, see the big shapes. A fun little exercise you can also do is paint with your non-dominant hand. That will really loosen you up. Another great exercise that I've had a lot of students do uh, that they like a lot is find something that you think would take you a long time to paint, like five plus hours and set a timer and paint that in 30 minutes. Now this isn't gonna make you produce a really good painting, but what it's gonna do is force you to paint quicker. And when you paint quicker, you're gonna realize what's important and what's not because you're not gonna have time to paint everything. One, it's gonna make all of your weaknesses rise to the surface so you can identify them. And it's gonna make you see what are the important elements in the scene. And you'll find quickly that it is not detail. 
All right, that's it for this week's Pain Talk. Uh, again, if you like the video, if you like the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, including the one that you just saw in this video, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Also, I am building a Foundations of Oil Painting course. It's gonna be an awesome course. I plan on releasing it by the end of the year. And if you don't wanna miss out on when I release that course, you need to sign up for the Paint Coach newsletter, which is linked below. It's for the Shortcut to Color Mixing guide when you sign up to get the shortcut to color mixing guide it's a short 10 minute video where i show you how i mix up any color using the primaries and white when you sign up for that you automatically are signed up for the paint coach newsletter and you'll be informed when my beginners foundations of oil painting course comes out and if you want to see what i'm painting on a daily basis you can follow me on instagram at forza 43 i'm chris fornatero here telling you to go get painting congratulations you made it to the end of the video you win the prize of subscribing to this channel also an extra surprise this video right here